Today, our LASDROP installation team will be showing you how to successfully install our Gen 2 shaft seal. The techniques and principles used here can apply to any of the LASDROP family shaft seals. Before we begin installation, we must review how to measure and correctly order your shaft seal. Using a caliper measurement tool, measure two items, your stern tube diameter and your propeller shaft diameter. Both of these must be exact measurements to ensure proper fit. To correctly measure your stern tube diameter, be sure to measure from the body of the stern tube, as some have flared ends. You can see an illustration here. To measure your shaft diameter, simply measure the diameter of your shaft with your caliper tool. You can see an illustration here. For additional information on sizing and charts, visit our website for details, lasdrop.com. In this installation, you will see that the shaft and stuffing box has already been removed from the port side of the boat. To illustrate the existing condition, here is a look at the starboard side, with the shaft and stuffing box still in place to be replaced at a later date. During this time, it is a recommendation to replace the strut bearings. As you can see, we replaced these prior to reinserting the shaft to prepare for the installation of the new Gen 2 shaft seal. This is not a required step, but if you are replacing the shaft seal, this is a great time to complete this maintenance project as well. Once you have removed the shaft and replaced the strut bearings, you can now reinstall the propeller shaft through the stern tube, leaving yourself ample room to install the shaft seal. Distances between the end of your propeller shaft and transmission mount may vary depending on your engine room size, but we recommend leaving 12 inches if possible. This will give you enough space to easily install your shaft seal. Now let's review your new Gen 2 shaft seal. Out of the box, you will find our premium stainless steel hose clamps, premium cooling lines, fasteners, and of course your shaft seal. Illustrated diagrams of all of our shaft seals may be found online at lasdrop.com. We will now install your shaft seal. When installing any of the lasdrop shaft seals, take the stern tube housing and slide it over the stern tube. Do not tighten the clamps yet. Make sure you have the two included stainless steel hose clamps on the connection hose at this time. Two clamps are required for anything below the waterline of your boat. The next step is critical to ensure no leaking will occur from your dripless Gen 2 shaft seal. Before sliding the spring housing onto your shaft, you will start by using the starter plug provided to ensure that your interior gaskets and the spring housing do not roll, causing unwanted leaks. Before installing the spring housing, use liquid hand soap to lubricate the shaft and seals. Do not use grease, oil, or any other lubricant. Here's another look at how to install the spring housing using the starter plug. On the end of the shaft, as shown here, you will push the spring housing over the starter plug and retrieve at the end of the shaft once your spring housing has been pushed on. Set your starter plug aside and keep for future use. Once your shaft seal and spring housing are on the shaft, you may reinstall your transmission flange to the shaft and the flange to the transmission mount. Once your shaft has been reconnected to your engine, you will secure the shaft seal. Ensure that your connection hose is between 1 and 3 quarter inch and 2 and a quarter inches on the stern tube or snug against the back wall, as some movement may have occurred when reinstalling the shaft to the transmission. Slide the two hose clamps down the stern tube. The first hose clamp will be installed and tightened approximately 1 8 inch from the end of the stern tube hose. The second hose clamp will be installed and tightened approximately 1 half inches apart from the first hose clamp. Each will be tightened until snug. It is important to re-snug after approximately 48 hours, as settling may have occurred. Please note, before tightening the hose clamps, be sure that the brass hose barbs are installed facing up. This will make it easier to install the cooling lines. Now that the stern tube hose is secured to the stern tube, we will install the spring housing. This is specific to the Gen 2 shaft seal. Join the spring housing to the shaft seal until the faces meet. Using electrical tape, indicate the position of the spring housing in relation to the propeller shaft when the spring housing is in a relaxed position. 
slightly tighten the set screws on the spring housing so there is resistance against the shaft. Compress the spring housing onto the lower portion of the shaft seal approximately one quarter of an inch. Using an Allen wrench, secure the spring housing tightly to the propeller shaft. Your Gen 2 shaft seal is now successfully installed to the shaft and stern tube. Before we can complete this project, you will need to install two cooling hoses at each shaft seal. Assuming you have twin engines, a cooling hose will come from a water line in each engine and will be attached to the hose barbs. For single propeller boats, you will use the plug provided on the unused barb. As illustrated here, you will splice into an engine water supply line and fix to the shaft seal using the small hose clamps provided. Providing water from both engines to your shaft seal is critical as a power failure in one engine may result in overheating if water is not supplied. For boats with hull speeds less than 8 to 10 knots, it is not necessary to supply cooling hoses with water. Install one water supply line from the barb above the water lines for ventilation only and tie off the hose. In the event of the boat being towed, it should not exceed 6 to 8 knots without a water source to the seals. Once your cooling hoses are attached and all fittings secure, your shaft seal replacement is complete. For more information about any of our LASDROP products, visit us online at lasdrop.com.